Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, still sick here, and I'm here to talk about some Castoria, as you can see right here. Happy day of the live stream, by the way. Today is the third, so we should be getting the live stream pretty soon. And after it's done, I will talk about the stuff that's announced in it. We should know everything that's about it, but I'm gonna wait till see if they add any special things. Uh, just because our version should be slightly different from the JP version. But one thing that will be shared is the fact that uh, Castoria will be here in the game. So, Artoria Castor, that's literally her name. So for today's video, I'm going to actually go over what she does. Because <laughs> in case you don't know, uh, it's funny because I feel like everyone knows what she does already. Because everyone's been saving for her and everyone's waiting for her. But if you're someone who has no idea who is Artoria Caster and what she does, this is basically for you. For everyone else, you already know what she does. You don't need me to say anything. So, I wish you good luck in your summons, by the way. Um, anyway, let's get into it. So what does she do? She is the anniversary unit. Why is she so good? Well, let's break it down real quick. She is, of course, Caster. She has three arts. One quick, one buster, and she has an arts NP. Her first skill is Charisma of Hope B. Increases the party attack for three turns. Charges party's NP gauge. Uh, <coughs> excuse me again. Attack is 20% at level 10. Um, and the NP gained is 30%. Six. Six turn cooldown. Very good. Um, second skill. I won't go into the clicky here, but it's the same effect. Protection of the Lake charges one ally's NP gauge and increases party's NP generation for three turns. Uh, at level 10, it's 20% uh, NP, and NP rate is 30%. A very good-ass skill. Third skill, <coughs> Caliburn Sword of Selection EX increases one ally's arts performance for three turns, increases their damage against threat to humanity enemies for three turns, and then grant them invincibility for one turn. Um, 50% to arts and 50% damage if you're fighting someone who is a threat to humanity. So that means if you are using double Castoria to fight a threat to humanity and they are arts, you basically have 200% attack increase, which is insane. And now let's go on to our passive skills. Magic Resistance A, increase own debuff resistance by 20%. Territory Creation EX, increases own arts performance by 12%. The one's own magic B increases own crit damage for arts cards by 10%. And I... Oh, damn it. Well, that's too late. Well, she gets this after you beat Avalon. Fey Eyes increase own critical attack resistance by 20%. <laughs> I, I had no idea that they had given skills that make her even better when you beat Avalon. But it's crazy. Her pen skill is nothing too special. As you can see here, increases its own attack against Saber enemies. And her Noble Phantasm, which is around Caliburn, the Ray of Hope that embraces you, it's anti-army, rank A, increases the party's attack for three turns, removes party debuffs, and then grants anti-purge defense uh, buff for N attacks three turns. Anti-purge defense nullifies ignore invincibility and damage based on over damage. Um, and anti-purge defense, you get a stock of it, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, depending on the overcharge. And the attack gain you get is either 30%, 40%, 45%, 47.5%, and 50%. The part about this NP that is so... Okay, so that's it. That's everything that she has. Why is she so good? If you could not tell from what me describing here, she is a uh, fucking amazing. There's no real way around it. This skill, very solid. It's her weakest skill, and it's better than most skills that most units have. <laughs> think about that for a moment, and think that this move is still better, even when it is her weakest. It is still amazing. Her second skill, charges one ally's NP gauge and increases their fucking NP generation? Nero, Bride Nero, which I use, and uh, I assume plenty of people use, as a kind of pseudo support because she's mainly a damage dealer, but she can be used as a support, has a skill like this where it increases the Alnelli's NP generation for three turns and charges their NP gauge. The NP rate is only 45%, and then the NP gained is 30%, but this is a unit that it comes with. Um, <clears throat> additional support like Nero at best will not be able to get you to the 50 Sh this will she told she's built to give you the 50 uh, to give you the additional 50% NP from just existing 
And then she also has this ability that gives you 50% to art specifically, and then if you're a threat to humanity, where right Nero, she gives 40%, which is very solid, still very good. But just to kind of put it on the level here. Tamamo, who is the next um, support for arts, because let me, it's a, it's a very unfair comparison, but Tamamo is the other arts supporter. She has a move that gives 50%, to arts very solid and she heals she has a move that gives herself 30 percent defense she has a move that uh gives 30 percent np damage and gives nothing else compare this to compare the two this is why it's unfortunate that she constantly gets dumped on because in actuality it's not that tamamo is bad it's that castoria is so good that you don't need cast a second castoria that's insane Think about that for a moment, because if you have a Scotty, you chances are will need another Scotty or you need to replace them with so many units. If you don't have Castoria and you're just using a friend Castoria, you still have so much to go through because Castoria can also replace uh, for 50% less damage, of course. She can probably replace a Scotty because some a lot of quick units kind of suffer from NP generation, which is very bad. Well, maybe not replace. You can definitely add her to the team and she can help a whole bunch. But the point I'm trying to say here is that the way that she supports and the way that she is built, it is so crazy stupid, especially when you consider the fact that most of the time you're going to have two of these and it's going to be the absolute easiest thing in the world to find another Castoria. I can tell you that day one, there's going to be Castorias on your friends list, level 100, fully decked out. You're just going to have them on there. I can guarantee you on that one. Um... And with that, com and you combine that and think about it, you're getting a 60% NP rate up. That is enough for most arts units alone. With one Bride Nero, which I've used before, it's usually enough. So if you have two of them, it's going to be insane. This unit, all their skills, this ability to give invincibility. I usually hate abilities that give you a buff and then also give you a shield. But this shield doesn't matter because it's been power crept by her own noble phantasm her noble phantasm which is this move right here which gives you the anti-purge defense the only way to get rid of this is to have an ability that removes buffs otherwise you're you can't it ignores ignores it ignores ignores invincibility think about that a move that ignores the thing that is supposed to defeat it so stupid and then it stacks based on overcharge so you can have and it's an arts np so you can have your arts dude hit up first and this is of course in a situation where you are fighting an enemy that is a boss and not necessarily for grinding but if you're fighting an enemy that is uh just straight up a boss and here's what you can do you can just use this as the second um the second or the third because you just want over overcharge you can very easily get 300 percent overcharge and the answer is, is that you have to have all three noble phantasms and then use it at the end and i know you're thinking that sounds really hard to do actual in actuality but it's not because her first skill gives the charge uh, charges party mp gauge by 30 percent and it gives it to everyone so that includes castoria so both castorias will be at 60 percent np they all have three arts cards, and then you're going to be using a arts unit as your main unit. So you, the main arts unit can literally just use their Noble Phantasm, and then you can use two arts cards from either Castoria, and then they can get their Noble Phantasm up, and then at the end, you can go fucking crazy with this. The one thing that is bad about using Double Castoria, which I should mention right here, right now, is that actual, in actuality, the, uh, the first charge of what Castorias use is the default for it. So actually, you can't do it with two Castorias. But you can do it with a Tomomo. And in which case, you'll have an even crazier time with it. But if you have it on, even at uh, using it as the second one, that's a 200% max. That's two charges of a buff that can only be destroyed by actually, like, um removing it or hitting them twice it's crazy it's dumb this unit changes a lot of things it changes a lot of what you're going to be using and it's so strong enough that you can only need one so again don't feel bad if you don't get them spend responsibly as i said in a previous video i still stand by that i have backup plans because i have them i have bright nero and i have tamamo and i have plenty of arts units that can still be used with her but having one of your own is definitely going to be insane. She's fucking amazing. She's probably the best 
anniversary unit we've had since Merlin. And this is the only reason that people are asking for why Merlin needs a buff is because Merlin doesn't stack anymore. There is no more debate about who is the best caster. It's her. There's even if I looked at the current list of it, I can't think of what like even they she's so good they stopped making caster supports. Because Tomomovich is uh, assassin, I think, or alter ego, one of the two. And I think the other one I don't want to mention just because he is a part of the Lost Belt. But I don't. I, I think he's also not. Actually, is he a caster? I'm going to pause the video real quick. I don't remember his. He is not a caster. So, but either way, the other Buster support, two of the Buster supports are released, not casters. If I had to take a guess and say the next quick support that's probably coming for this anniversary on JP will not be a caster. Just because I think at a certain point, Castoria broke it. She's the best caster in the entire game. How do you top this? It's in. It's almost impossible. You have to actually give it to other classes. Because if you just keep doing an arms race where the best casters are put together, it completely out outshines the other members of the, <laughs> of the caster class. She, that's how good she is, is that she creates problems that weren't there to begin with. Well, to be fair, you could say they kind of were there for a bit. But anyway, I digress. Best of luck to you if you're summoning. She's 100% worth it. I think that even if you don't have much save, throwing a multi, see what happens, is perfectly warranted for it. If there's other units that you care about more coming up in the future, I would say, obviously, hey, do your own thing, save. Don't feel pressure to do anything. But if you got some stuff left over, because I know anniversary is coming, you can at least spare one multi. And I say, better to go for it than to not. A. That's how I got her on JP, which is why I'm afraid of what's going to happen to me on NA because I got her on JP on a single summon. That's not happening over here. That's that's an insane amount of luck. And I didn't even fully level up her skills and she was still putting in work for me. So that's in the end of the video, everyone. I'll see you guys a little bit later because I think, I'm, like I said, I am going to record a summoning video and then I'm also going to record what the stuff happens at the panel and anything else like that. So hey, I'll see you around, and I am feeling better about my sick, I am occasionally coughing, so don't worry about it. If you want to say thanks, as always, you can leave a like, you can subscribe to me if you want some more video stuff, and I'll see you guys in the next one. See you guys later, bye bye.